<laughs> hey Survivor fans, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out my Survivor Puzzle app. The link is in the video's description. Michelle had the luxury of being somebody that wasn't seen as a threat that people would like to take to the end. And I think she used that to her advantage. You know, she knew that she wasn't somebody people were gunning for. And so she just, her approach, I think, was to just get by. And she did. She got by. And so if she gets to the end, then she did that well. She won some immunities. I think there's people that will vote for Michelle. I think she's made some friends, you know, and I, I think more than that, she's not made as many enemies as other people. So I think the best thing Michelle can do is just own what happened to her out here and try to narrate her experience as somebody that didn't have any control in the game and yet fought, 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 tried to not be the vote. I mean, maybe she plays the, you know, more of the Sandra card. Like I just wanted to get to the end. You know, Tony for me was the most surprising person out here. Like he was somebody coming out here I was not excited to meet. I did not want to play with. Um, he, I just thought he was going to embody chaos and just be this like crazy person. And he was <laughs> in a lot of ways, but it was more likable than I thought it was going to be. And I ended up with Tony from day one at DeKal. We were together at the swap. We were together at the merge. You know, I spent as much time with Tony as I did anyone out here. I did, no, I spent more time with Tony than anyone out here and we developed a relationship and it was genuine and it was good and, and yet he totally screwed me over and voted me out and lied to me but there was, I didn't ever feel like he did it in a way that made me feel slimy. Like I always kind of knew it was coming and I think he played his ass off. Like I, I, he never quit, he never relaxed, he never tried to be safe. You know, I mean, he really went for it. And in a season like that, that's impressive, you know? Not only to get to the end with this group of people and a target on your back, it's not like he was some underdog story that, you know, nobody expected. Uh, to never get your name written down and, you know, to win all these immunities, to play double agent, you know, I mean, it's just, he played a really great game in a very, very tough season. So I think he has, you know, a good shot at winning. I think what I'd like to hear from Tony tonight is a story that's equally compelling as what I feel like I've watched unfold in front of me. You know, I think those two things need to match. Like the gameplay's been there, you know, the winning, the storytelling, the blind sides, like he's technically played the game and I just need to hear, you know, that it was really there, that the wizard was really behind the curtain, you know what I mean? And not that it was an accident or that Sarah set him up, but like affirmation that those two things line up. Going into this season, if you had asked me would I vote for the person that played the flawless game from the edge or the flawless game from the game, it was a no-brainer for me. It was the flawless game from the game. Um, but I, I think you cannot help but be impressed with what Natalie has done. She went to the edge and she worked her tail off and she found every clue, every advantage. She played them all perfectly. She had a huge impact on the game. She had this incredibly positive, optimistic, fun attitude. She stayed out there for 36 days, whatever it is, 34 days. And she developed great relationships with people. You know, she made real friendships and she connected with people and she strategized to get back in. Honestly, to the point where I was like, this is good. I felt bad for her. Like before the battle back, I was like, this is going to be really hard. She's convinced herself she's going to get back in the game. She's got this idol. She's planning, you know, to get to the end and now she's doing it, you know? And so there's something very impressive about that. And I like Natalie, like I got to spend five days with her and I think she's an incredible human being. And so that's where that likability factor comes in, you know, and it's tricky because I want to play for, I want to vote for the person I think played the best game, but I can't help but feel compelled by Natalie, by the person of Natalie. So, um, you know, I think she's done everything she needed to do. She's, you know, if there was a flawless game from the edge, she's played it. It's really hard to not consider her a viable option for the win because this is our season. Like it or not, the edge is part of the rules, you know, and you can't ignore that. So this, these, these were the parameters that they, that Jeff gave us to play by this season and she's played well within those parameters. And, you know, I think she has a really good shot at winning. You know, I think that's the question. Can someone play the perfect game from the edge and then come in and, and win against somebody that's played a very good game within the game and never been voted out? 
for me personally, I'm very much in conflict within myself about that question. 